Hello, this is Manash Patel from the EII Capital Group. Today is April 11, 2011. It's our weekly Ichimoku analysis for the currency markets. <coughs> um, before we begin, here's our normal disclaimer. This is for educational use only. All charts are either in Thinkorswim, TradeStation, or FreeStockCharts.com. Here are my contact details. You can reach me at mpatel at eiicapital.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at Ichimoku Trading or you can access any of our free videos on eiicapital.com. Okay, so let's begin <clears throat> as we normally do every week. Let's go to the heat map. Ooh, that's a little too small. And <clears throat> what we're looking for, okay, here's our heat map over here. Remember, we're looking at D0 for daily time frame. That's current daily time frame. D5 is the, the time frame from five days ago. And W0 is basically the weekly time frame for today, um, this week. And W1 is the uh, Ichimoku rating for the weekly time frame uh, from a week ago. What we're looking for is basically for bullish nature, uh, we're looking for a rating system of 5 to 8 being, the f 8 being extreme bearish. And negative 5 to negative 8 where negative 8 is being extreme bear uh, bearish. So we're looking for a D0 to kind of be around 5. Uh, to start looking for a possible trade setup in the weekly time frame uh, being anywhere from 5 to 8, uh, preferably around 5, so both of them start moving and the daily starts influencing the weekly. Uh, if you can look here in the Euro USD, it's bullish in nature and all costs, all time frames it has been, uh, so there's no real trade there. Uh, if you look at the pound USD, it's getting stronger here. You could see from D0, uh, so we'll look at the pound, of course. Um, New Zealand USD. It's getting strong too, so we'll look at that one. Uh, Australian USD is strong. It's at the eight already. Uh, it was six next week, last week. US CAD is basically bearish. Uh, US Switzy is bearish. We'll look at US Switzy because it's negative six, so maybe some trading opportunities there. Um, Australian yen. If you look at also all the yen pairs. Uh, they're still very bullish in nature, as you could see. Some have weakened, some are same, some are pretty much is exactly where they're at. Okay, so if you look at the yen, uh, US yen, it got stronger here, but to look at the weekly, it's still not strong completely on the weekly time frame. Uh, so we're looking for the daily to come and influence the weekly and make sure it's coming with us. Uh, so US uh, yen is really not a trend trade for us because we don't want to go against the weekly time frame. Um, Euro yen. Is strong here, uh, still one and four over here. So we're really remember you're looking at this column right here, uh, and so they're really you kind of want them around five if possible. Uh, so there's nothing really there. The strongest one of all the yen pairs, believe it or not, is Switzy yen right here, as you could see. It's got seven across the board, uh, and it's gotten stronger here. So we'll look at Switzy yen in a minute. Um, and if we just scroll down, uh, there's nothing here for Euro Switzy, pound, Euro Pound, nothing there. Uh, Euro CAD, it's got strong here, still weekly, still working. Uh, Euro here, nothing there, nothing there, nothing there. It's just scrolling down, see exactly what we find. Uh, pound Switzy could be a possible uh, trade right there. We'll look at that one. Um, and then if you look down here, uh, nothing on Australian there, nothing there. Pound Switzy, we already went through that. So we'll look at Pound Switzy, uh, Switzy Yen, uh, Pound USD, and a couple of others. So let's go straight to our charts and start going through some of the major pairs. Uh, let's go look at the Euro USD first. Remember, on our left hand side, we basically got our weekly time frame. On the right hand side is basically a daily time frame. So if we zoom in here, you can see that both the, the weekly and daily are in a bullish trend. Uh, however, notice um, we're getting signs here on the Euro USD being basically overextended on the weekly uh, over here. So looking for a low minor pullback on the weekly time frame before it continues to go up. Uh, if you look at the daily, you could see that it's overextended too, especially with that gap that happened last week. Um, so you kind of get in the minor pullback, probably a pullback to this pivot here, uh, 43.39. That's going to be the first minor, minor support level. Uh, the first uh, medium support that you're going to be looking at is 42.73. So if it could get to 42.73, uh, the question is what it will do there, and then go from there. 
if you're in a USD, uh, Euro USD, tighten up your stops. Uh, don't give back your profits to the market. Uh, if you're not in the Euro USD, you need to be patient and wait for this thing to pull back before you even getting into any positions at all. Um, let's look at a pound USD. It's pretty, uh, the Ichimoku rating told us to look at it. You can see that it is um, bullish trending on the weekly and also bullish trending on the daily. Now, even though it's bullish trending, notice what's happening. It still doesn't have that big push up. Uh, as you need for a trend, it's kind of just hanging around, uh, but it's still kind of here at this minor support level of 4286. Uh, it's just hanging around. You could see from the daily too, you got a lot of volatility because look at all these big gap bars on that occurred on the daily time frame. That's not good for a trend at all. Uh, so I'll be very careful in trading the pound USD due to the volatility that's there. We like to take trends that don't have too many gap plays in there and have nice smooth pushments up uh, very similar to kind of what you see on Australian USD look at this guy see this guy let's look at that that's a nice movement up uh, not too many big white uh, candle bars at all that's kind of what you're looking for in the trend uh, also you need minor pullbacks this one didn't have that many minor pullbacks and going up uh, so this still is too steep of a trend for us uh, but we like things to kind of go up, pull back a minor, pull go up, pull back minor, and keep on going that way. Those trends have the tendency of lasting the longest. Reason why there's not much volatility in them. Okay, uh, let's go look at the US yen. Sorry, I've got allergies, so you got to bear with me on that. Uh, if you look at US yen, uh, this is the weekly time frame. You can see the intervention that happened here, big push up. Uh, we're kind of just basing around here. Uh, it looks like we're going to retest the, the major, minor minor support here at uh, the same level that we broke out to over here. Uh, if you look at the daily time frame, it's kind of pulling into the Tinkinson. Uh, 84 level is going to be a key on the US yen right now for it to hold. If it can hold that and keep on going higher, this thing does have a possibility of going up 90, so just be careful and watch for that. Okay. Um, let's go look at Switzy again because that was the strongest of all of them. And wow, you could see this. That you could see this is strong. Here's the intervention that happened with the Japanese government right there. Uh, you could see it was still bullish strong at that point, even before the intervention. Right here, you could see the intervention happen. It just came down to the Cajun Sin on the weekly, bounced off that. So this was the strongest of all the yen pairs. Uh, go moving forward. Uh, if you're not in it, you need to wait for a pullback. You need uh, first support level you're going to have is 9183. Uh, ideally, um, get there, uh, but you kind of need a major pullback to at least take this thing down uh, some because this thing is going high and high and high. And you could see that it's already retraced 50% of this big long downward movement uh, that happened back in 2008. So. Uh, it's interesting to see that it's already retraced half, uh, but you could see that it's way overextended now and it's due for a correction at some point. So uh, definitely look for that. Pound Switzy was another one, I believe. I think that was it. Let me double check. Um, pound Switzy, yep. Okay, so that was on the verge. And if you look here, uh, here's the weekly. You can see that it's bearish trending, still going down. It's been holding the Cajuns in very well. If you look at the daily time frame, it's not quite ready yet. Uh, that's why you got a six. Uh, however, if it gets below the Cajuns in, this thing does have a possibility of going down lower. Uh, the only problem I have is the Chicago here. Uh, it's getting weaker and weaker and weaker because this pullback happened too much. So you got to wait for a level of 47.32 before you wait. It's got to get down to that support level, see if it holds a break for it. If it breaks for that, then look for the next level around 46.32. If it breaks for that, then definitely look for a trade. Uh, but right now, just be careful in entering this one uh, going short. Okay. Um, let's see, what else was there? I think we covered everything there. Uh, let's go look at a New Zealand pair. Let's go look at New Zealand USD. Look at New Zealand USD. You can see from the daily time frame, it's bullish trending. Uh, it's broken this little resistance. Actually, come down here. It's 
looked like a triple top here, so be very careful right there. Uh, if you look at the weekly, there's conflict all over the place, believe it or not, because between the tickets and cages it's inverted. So I'll be very careful because this does look like a triple top can possibly form here. Uh, if it doesn't, it looks like it's going to break higher and then pull back. But a pullback is definitely in, uh, is, is, is needed for the New Zealand USD trend uh, to enter a healthy uh, trend uh, moving forward. Uh, let's look with US CAD. We do have a lot of CAD customers. Um, we've been warning of CAD going lower, and it has been going lower. I'm going to enlarge the weekly uh, and shrink this down. And you can see the, all the different levels here. Uh, we got into this level here, which is 95.28. This is the level that we put on Twitter. Um, let me mark that again here. <coughs> this was one level here. Uh, definitely got there. Now next level, believe it or not, 93.20. If it gets to 93.20, next level is going to be here, 9, 9, 9.056. Um, it's not looking good for the U.S. CAD at all. Um, momentum is down to the downside. and It does look like that this does have a tendency to probably keep on uh, going lower for the next couple of weeks or maybe consolidating. But uh, U.S. CAD does look like it's trying to get down to the next level 9320 or possibly going down lower so just be very careful if you're bullish uh, if you haven't gotten out uh, be very careful that's it for this week I hope you enjoyed it uh, let me know if you have any feedback via email